adding crews to an XJ really isn't much at all from 1997 to 2001. Most already had crews, but this here is a base model with no options. I'm assuming because you're watching this video, you want and don't currently have cruise control, so I'm going to show you how to fix that for you people out there with weak ankles who have clearly never worn heelys. All you'll need is a new clock spring, or in this case a used one from a Jeep that did have cruise, a steering wheel equipped with the buttons for it, and the cruise module itself. All the wiring is already there, even on the SE trim. Alright, here's what I got for tools. Try to ignore him playing basketball over there. Anyway, we need sockets from 8 to 8 millimeter to 13 sixteenths. A screwdriver, some maybe, you might need some... Some of these you might need some D-pin tools. It depends what you're going to do. You know, various extensions. A T20 Torx might come in handy. This is a steering wheel puller kit. You're definitely going to want to rent one of these. I got this one from AutoZone, and you can return it for a full refund. And once again, depending on what you're doing, you might need some uh, wire crimps. Or, you you know, you might just need some dielectric grease to clean up the connector. A torque wrench for the steering wheel bolt. And these, these tools over here are just, it depends how stubborn the steering wheel is going to be. You know, I, I had quite a, quite a hard time getting the damn steering wheel off, so that's about it. Pretty basic tools. To start, I'll disconnect the battery from both the negative and positive terminals, and then remove it from the vehicle entirely. This does two things. Firstly, while we're working in the engine bay, this will give us a lot more room to get the cruise module in place. And secondly, while the battery is disconnected, what little ambient power there is left in the system will be drained, so when we work on the airbag inside, it won't have any juice. You also might notice there is no tie-down bracket on this battery, and that's because the tray is broken, so I'll replace that too. The connector for the module is zip-tied to the fender right here, and through 20 years of unprotected weathering, this connector is in no shape to be plugged in. You can use dielectric grease and a very small pick to clean it up, but after seeing the condition of the pins, I opted to just splice on a different connector. With it all wrapped up in tape, that's all the wiring mods done. With that taken care of, fish the cable through the engine bay behind the fuse box, under the AC lines, through the plastic guide on the valve cover, and into its slot on the throttle cable bracket. The end simply clips onto the throttle. Using three random self-tapping screws, secure the module to the fender using the holes already in place. Then take the cap off this vacuum line T-piece, and if you've driven the vehicle recently, it may still have some vacuum in it. Now the connector can be plugged in, and that should be all good to go. I'll also quickly install a different battery tray and plug in the battery temperature sensor. Here's the routing for the cruise cable, it is pretty self-explanatory. With the engine bait done except for the battery, let's head inside and add the buttons to the steering wheel. On 1997 and 98 models, you'll need to source an entire steering wheel with the buttons already on it. But on 99 to 01 models, you have two options. You can still just put this entire steering wheel on. Or you can just transfer the buttons from this one to this one. And because this steering wheel looks like the social climate of a gathering after my ex showed up, I'm just going to transfer these buttons onto this unscathed wheel. There are two 8mm bolts on the back securing the airbag in place. With those removed, it pivots forward just enough to remove the connector for it and the horn. Even though I'm just going to add the buttons, the entire steering wheel still needs to come off because we need a different clock spring. Wherever you choose to store the airbag in the meantime, make sure you have it facing up just in case it decides to randomly explode, it won't launch itself into the stratosphere. You can now remove this 13 16 nut from the center, being careful not to put torque on the steering shaft by holding the wheel in place. The entire time you're doing this, try not to rotate any part of the shaft or clock spring because things can get damaged. Then thread in two bolts from your steering wheel puller kit, centering the main bolt on the steering shaft.
What? Are you serious? Look at that. It just sheared off the entire threads, all of them. It was coming off too. It's like halfway off and then it just gave up. Isn't that something? So first we tried this catastrophe. That didn't work. Then we drilled a new hole and retapped the threads to get the puller back on there. <sighs> I got the steering wheel off, but at what cost? It just, it broke. It completely destroyed itself. So this center ring is still on the shaft here. I don't know how I'm going to get that off. Anyway, clock spring has two tabs on the top and bottom and two connectors. And then it would normally come off. But of course, that this is still stuck on there. During editing, I realized I completely forgot to even mention how to get this thing apart. So this is a two-piece just plastic cover. The top piece just slides up, the bottom piece just slides down. There are two Phillips head screws way up in here. That just, you know, you can shove a screwdriver up in these two holes. And there is actually a third one that's under here. In order to get to that one, you have to take off this plastic panel. Uh, there's just three screws on the bottom here to get that off and then three screws in this bottom part which separates that and then you can get that off to get the clock spring out. Using various methods I incinerated the clock spring to get a better grip on the remaining piece with the puller and then set it up like this. Here's what a clock spring looks like when you blow it up. So that's pretty cool. I had to destroy it to get it off of that shaft and now I've got additional parts from the steering wheel puller held together with two hose clamps on there tightest as they can go. And uh, this one was too big, so I shoved an extension in there. So now I'm just gonna try cranking that sucker down and see what, see what, if that can do anything. I don't know how there's rust in there. Typical, but I've been spraying it with peanut butter. All right, we'll see what breaks this time. So yeah, when I go to tighten it, it wants to turn the entire steering shaft so in order to hold that straight, I put this big ass pipe wrench on here. Come on. What broke? Oh, the hose clamp broke. So yeah, these bars are literally bending outwards. That's how tight that sucker's on there. All right, now I've got my biggest set of vice grips on there, as tight as they can freaking go. We'll see what breaks this time. Come on now. amount of torque that thing is on me right now. Did it break free? Did it actually? I think it did. I think it actually. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Oh my god! Yes! I was about ready to rip the entire steering column out of this damn thing. Wow. Rust is evil. But evil can always be defeated. Ah! I want to point out real quick that this other one, it just came right off. It just, see there's no rust on this shaft, which I don't even know how that rusts to begin with. But there's no rust on this one, and it just pulled right off of there like it should have. So this normally wouldn't be so damn hard. So I was going to try to take these apart and transfer this good wheel over to this metal bracket, but it's all one piece, which is kind of understandable. So this steering wheel is done for and destroyed. That unfortunately means I'm going to have to keep this one but the more parts from the Reclaimer I can put into this thing, the longer its legacy lives on.
To install the buttons, the back plate goes on and then the bracket slides behind the metal piece as such. Install the T20 Torx bits holding those in place and then pop the wires into this slot. Now I don't think I'm going to have to take the steering wheel off again, but just in case, I'm going to lather a whole bunch of anti-seize all over this. I cleaned the rust off with a wire wheel. With the steering wheel off, I'm also taking the opportunity to replace the multi-function switch because when you make right turns, the blinker doesn't automatically shut itself off, which is kind of annoying. So I'm just going to put in this one, which just slides in like that. Just two T20 Torx bits hold this little rubber cover on here, and I think it's kind of cool to see how this thing works. When you make a left turn, it pushes that little tab in, and as the steering wheel returns to center, it hits that tab and resets the lever. The clock spring slides on the shaft and clicks into place. You can then plug in the two connectors on the back side. Fish the wires through the steering wheel and slide it onto the shaft. It'll only fit one way because of the grooves. The steering wheel nut is torqued to 45 foot-pounds on the 97 Plus models. Plug in your cruise buttons and then the horn and airbag connectors. The airbag bolts are torqued to 90 inch-pounds. With everything inside ready, I'll finally lower the battery in place and install the tie-down bracket. Moment of truth. Alright, just making sure nothing exploded. Verify real quick before you start it up that the airbag light doesn't stay on. That's a good sign. We'll see if cruise works, huh? There's the light and set. And it works! Yeah! <laughs> yes! That was that was honestly pretty easy. That wasn't that, that wasn't that bad. Alright, now I can be lazy.